what you're going to have to do here is read an article by the Emeritus Professor of Economics, Raj Janunka, who's based in Australia. He's written an article, which um, the title of which gives the game away, so to speak. It's uh, not a mystery where he's coming from. The title is High Youth Unemployment Can't Be Blamed on Wages. So the, the issue of concern here is the question of whether high youth unemployment, and youths here we usually mean 15 to 19 year olds, but it could be 15 to 24 year olds. Anyway, so youth unemployment is higher than the overall level of unemployment and certainly higher than for non-youths. The question is why is that the case? And the, it's sometimes argued, uh, particularly by um, some industry groups, industry lobby groups, and some right-wing uh, think tanks which work for industry lobby groups, that the explanation is that youths are paid too much money, uh, or conversely, uh, that... Um, the unemployment benefits that youths receive is too much. Either way, youths are getting too much money and they need to be put a, under a bit more economic pressure to uh, compel them into uh, seeking work uh, and also businesses should be relieved of pressure of having to pay high wages to youths, and this will solve the youth unemployment problem. So, uh, Professor Janunka is concerned to debunk this line of argument. So what you need to do is first read the article, and then we'll go through, very quickly, we'll go through some questions related to it. Let's look at the, uh, the theoretical argument, or a simple version anyway, of the theoretical argument that uh, youth unemployment is caused by a high minimum wage, uh, a wage above the equilibrium wage. Uh, what we'll do is we'll look at a video by, uh, just a snippet of a video, by two... Um, uh, economists from George Mason University. This is uh, George Mason University is a home of uh, right-wing libertarian economists, and uh, here we have uh, their discussion of the explanation that uh, Professor Janankar is really pushing back against. I said that a price floor creates surpluses. A minimum wage is a price floor, so it's going to create a surplus. A surplus of labor we call what? We say a gaggle of geese, a pride of lions. A surplus of labor is called unemployment. So let's look with our model to understand how a minimum wage can create unemployment, particularly among the least skilled workers. Okay, here's our standard diagram, except we're going to put the quantity of labor, especially unskilled labor, on the horizontal axis the wage or the price of labor on the vertical axis. There's our supply curve. There's our demand curve with the market uh, wage and the market employment level. Now we're going to add the minimum wage. This is a price floor below which uh, it is illegal to buy or sell this good, labor. Now we just read the consequences of the price floor off the diagram. So we read, for example, that at the minimum wage, the quantity of labor demanded is read off the demand curve. Remember, this is the demand for labor. So this is the quantity of labor demanded. And at the minimum wage, the quantity of labor supplied is read off the supply curve. Let's put that point on, that's QS. So we have QS units of labor supplied, QD units of labor demanded. QS is bigger than QD, so the difference between them is a surplus of labor, also known as unemployment.
So if we think of a youth making a choice between employment and unemployment, then we have to think about what are the variables that are going to affect that. Well, the predominant ones we could say are the remuneration you get from each kind. So if we take uh, employment, you'd get, let's say, uh, average weekly earnings from that. But from unemployment, you would receive unemployment benefits. Now, which would be more attractive, employment versus unemployment, depends on the relative sizes of these two kinds of payments. Now, if we accept that this is uh, relevant, we could introduce, as Professor Janunka does, we could introduce the idea of the replacement rate. Now, the replacement rate is going to be unemployment benefits over average weekly earnings. So the idea here might be posited as follows. If, for example, unemployment benefits rise relative to average weekly earnings, then we'd say that unemployment becomes preferable to employment. That is, unemployment becomes a more attractive proposition if the unemployment benefits rise relative to the average weekly earnings. And in that case, one would expect an increase in unemployment, in youth unemployment. Now, this chain of reasoning is an important one because it can have powerful political or policy implications. Namely, it could be argued that, well, if we want to reduce unemployment, we don't want youth unemployment going up, what we need to do is to do the following. We need to cut unemployment benefits to young people. Thus, this overall ratio will fall, that will make employment preferable to unemployment, and thus youth unemployment will fall. Now, in his article, Professor Janunka is at pains to argue that this chain of reasoning is unsatisfactory. He says that, in fact, what we found is that the replacement ratio has been uh, declining over time. And yet, if we take the case of the period in the uh, post-global financial crisis, youth unemployment has been rising. Contrary to what this chain of reasoning would suggest. So it means that if we want to explain rising or high youth unemployment, we cannot rely on this as our causal factor. That is, that youth unemployment benefits are too high relative to the average weekly earnings. Now we can see his point being made graphically if we scroll down, and here we come to youth unemployment and replacement rates. So Professor Tanankar is concerned, let's say we're talking about 18 to 20, 20 year olds. So from about the, uh, the late 90s, we've got the replacement rate is trending downwards, basically, meaning that unemployment benefits are falling relative to average weekly earnings for 18 to 20 year olds. If unemployment benefits are falling relative to average weekly earnings, then unemployment becomes increasingly unattractive, employment becomes more attractive. Now you might say, well, if we look at the youth unemployment rates here, we can see for that same period, 
from the 90, late 90s onwards, that the unemployment rate's basically on a down, downward trajectory as well. But Professor Janankar is concerned to point out uh, this unfortunate anomaly for that story that, well, if that's true, it's falling here, but we get this spike here. Okay? So how could we explain that spike? It should continue falling, but it doesn't. It can't be explained by somehow unemployment becoming more attractive than employment during, due to the lavish, luxurious life that you lead living under the poverty line on unemployment benefits. Well, the answer to this question is to be found here. If Professor Janankar is correct that the key driver of youth unemployment is not uh, youth wage rates or unemployment benefits for youth, but aggregate demand for goods and services, then we would expect to find some kind of relationship, even if only a rough one, between economic growth rates and the youth unemployment rate. So if economic growth increases and is high, then we would expect there to be high demand for labour and therefore a lower youth unemployment rate and vice versa. A fall in aggregate demand leads to a fall in economic growth. Lower economic growth would then lead to uh, higher unemployment and, in particular, higher youth unemployment. So, if we can see a relationship between the turning points of economic growth rates and the turning points on youth unemployment, this would support Professor Janankar's contention. We've got a peak in economic growth here. This is quarterly economic growth. And a trough in youth unemployment. A trough in economic growth. A peak in youth unemployment. An increase in economic growth. A fall in youth unemployment. A fall in economic growth. An increase in youth unemployment. An increase in economic growth. A fall in youth unemployment. A fall in economic growth, an increase in youth unemployment. There does seem to be a rough and ready relationship between economic growth spurred by changes in aggregate demand and youth unemployment. 